Hello world. Hello USA. I'm Pastor Scott from Lighthouse Church and Lighthouse Ministries located in beautiful Southern California. We've got a cool day here in SoCal. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain. Welcome to our live broadcast. We're so glad to have you on. How about a little bit of humor and levity? Are we up for that? Yeah. A pastor was taking a walk when he came upon a group of young boys and they were surrounding a small dog. The pastor heard them say, okay, whoever can tell the biggest lie gets the dog pastor broke into a 10-minute sermon about not lying and how it's a sin. He said, when I was your age, I never told a lie. There was complete silence. And just when the pastor thought they reached them, the young boy stood up and said to the other boys, all right, give him the dog. (laughs) If you didn't get that, well, you're slow. (laughs) When endeavoring to do something great in life, make sure you pull the bow back all the way and with all your strength, let it fly. Amen. Remember this, only the brave get to go to the victory party. Today I want to talk about victory and the realization we have already been made victorious in Christ. But first, Marilyn, my wife has a few quick words to share with you. Marilyn. All right, good morning. I just wanted to give you a a few updates on our broadcast. Um, The last two weeks, um, How Faith Works got 144,000 views. views. And last week, the word prospers had 184,000 views. Wow. I think that's really amazing. That's over a third of a million people right. viewing. Right. And then our reach was over 600,000 people. Amen. In over those two million. weeks, just in those two weeks. All right. So I the thought that was really amazing. prospering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then I also wanted to let you know, um, if you want to give to our ministry, because it is reaching around the world, and 100% of your money goes right back into the ministry. It's tax deductible. There's Venmo for um, domestic at LN Lighthouse. That's at LN Lighthouse. That's for Venmo. And then PayPal is international. Pay, international PayPal.me slash LN Lighthouse. So if you want to give, 100% goes back. But we're so amazing what the Lord's doing, reaching around the world. It's, it's Amen. awesome. Praise God. All right, we got some hellos. Hey, Oliver. All right. We were just talking about you. Glad to have you on. And James is on in Atlanta. Jamie? Oh, James. Okay. Corey on Instagram. Corey. All the way from Cabo San Lucas. Hello. Yeah. And we have Joseph in Uganda. Hello, Joseph. He says, um, good morning. Good morning. We have the Azeltines in the backyard. Azeltines in the backyard. We have Scott on sound. Yes. Uh, we have Josh. Uh, he says hello and ready for the word. Hello, Josh. Good morning. Welcome. All right. Anybody else? Um, they're joining, so I'll let you know when they Christy and Casey, I'm sure they're watching, yes, too. There was Do we have President Biden on? Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's take our Bible, shall we? And hold, it, hold them up. Nothing like the Word of God in your life. Amen? And repeat after me. This is my Bible. It was written for me. It was written for me. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Today my mind is alert. Today my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart's receptive. The spirit of faith and victory is rising up in me. The spirit of faith and victory is rising up in me. I'm growing in favor with God and with men. I'm growing in favor with God and with man. The power of the word is changing my life. The power of the word is changing my life. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We have believed therefore. We speak. speak. Praise God. Well, what is your, oh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, Marilyn. Okay. Um, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that past tense? No, it's present tense. But it's also past tense. Yes. He's already given us the victory. We already have obtained it in Christ. Praise God. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the victory we have in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that this Christian life is a victorious Christian life. It's an overcoming life. It's a successful life. Um, You'll find your greatest success in life when you follow Christ. Lord, we pray that you would anoint the broadcast. You touch every life, every person, listening and viewing, Lord. Let the power of God come upon them right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, the anointing is here. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. It breaks the yoke of the burdens the oppression that's upon us and sets us free. Just as the bird is set free from the cage, has been made free in Christ. What is your definition of victory? You could say not losing. (laughs) That's pretty simple. When we were in Paris, France, we viewed the Nike statue. Perhaps some of you have seen that. The winged victory of Samothrace, which is a 
island in the Aegean Sea. She's a, a Greek goddess, the goddess of victory. She's a headless and armless winged creature singing out victory and dominion. We're all familiar with the shoe and clothing company, Nike, promoting athletic success in the world of sports. The word Nike means people of victory or a community of victorious people, which really represents what? The church of Jesus Christ, the glorious and victorious church. Marilyn, Ephesians 5, 27. That he might present to her, her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and without blemish. And what makes us holy without blemish? blemish? The fact that what? Christ dwells in us, and he is holy and without blame, without blemish. And he dwells in the church. Hallelujah. He is the head, and we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. John, can you also say um, hi to Job? Says, Hello, Job. All right. Hey, praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Hallelujah. And Receive it. All right. Amber and Danny. Welcome. Glad you guys are on. Hope you're getting blessed. Perhaps you say victory is defeating your opponent in an athletic endeavor, a business venture, or even a military engagement. The greatest margin of victory in a football game, if you like football, was on October 7th, 1916. Georgia Tech defeated Cumberland University 222 to 0. Now, if you're not familiar with football, that's an overwhelming uh, win and victory. It was the most lopsided game in college football history. Talk about running up the score. Victory, as described in the Bible, is really defeating an enemy or someone or something by an overwhelming margin. Our victory is overwhelming. We're more than conquerors. Romans 8:37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And really, it should be rendered in the Greek, super conquerors. We are super conquerors. We ought to expect victory in every aspect of life. Victory is the overcoming of an enemy or antagonist. It is the achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor against tough odds or difficulties in life. Victory, like faith, is a sense of confidence and assurance you are and will be Victorious. Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England, years ago said, Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long, however hard the road may be, for without victory there is no survival. The Ukrainians are holding to this premise of victory. You can't obtain victory unless you're willing to fight. What or who are our enemies in life? Good question. The Bible says the primary ones are sin, the world, the flesh, sickness, fear, oppression, lack, death, and the devil himself. This is of utmost importance for you to understand. We already have the victory in Christ. It's already been accomplished. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to toil for it. We just receive it and walk in it. Hallelujah. We access victory through faith and faith alone. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today you're receiving faith as you hear the word of God. Jesus gained victory on the cross and in his resurrection. Oh, death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. And we're coming up on the Easter season very soon. It'll be April 17th here in the United States. Let's look at Colossians 2.14. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which is contrary to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. We paid a debt we couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. That debt of sin has been removed. Hallelujah. And erased forever as though it never existed. You can go through the halls of history. You'll never find your debt if you're in Christ. It's been removed. It's been eradicated. It never existed. The word is justification. Just as though... It never happened. Your sins are just as though they never happened before God. Is that good news? Yeah. <laughs> See if you can beat that. The new spirit we have in, our, in Christ is formulated for victory. And it's been made to overcome in this life. We've been given the spirit of power, love, and what? A sound mind. God's power overcomes all things that come against us in this life and obtains the victory. Ephesians 3.20, one of my favorites. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Talking about superlatives. Exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according 
to his power, which dwells in us and works in us. So what is the pathway to victory in this life? In the universe, there are two powers at work. A lot of people scoff at this, and they laugh at it. There's no devil, and there's no evil, and uh, they make fun of these kind of things. But nevertheless, it's true, and we do know there's evil. It's very apparent. The kingdom of light is opposed to the kingdom of darkness, and they are diametrically opposed against each other. Colossians 1, 12 and 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and, conv- and conveyed us into the kingdom of his Son of so his So when love. you come to Christ, you're taken out of the power of darkness or the kingdom of darkness and you come into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God's dear Son, which is so much more powerful. What does the kingdom of light consist of? It's a power and a presence which makes up the kingdom of God the very presence and power of God. It is life. Say that, life. Life. Freedom. Say it. Faith. Faith. Light. Light. Goodness. Goodness. Love. Love. Health. Health. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. Truth. Truth. Prosperity. Prosperity. And blessing. Wow, hallelujah. In contrast, the kingdom of darkness is characterized by death, sin, bondage, unbelief, oppression, sickness, disease, lies, and poverty. We find ourselves as believers engaged in a spiritual battle, good against evil, light against darkness. Maryland, 2 Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the mighty in God through pulling down of strongholds. We pull down the strongholds through these supernatural weapons and defeat the enemy in our life. You know, there's a great story in the book of Joshua that I want to relate to you. Joshua has taken over. He was the successor of Moses. And he's taken over for the great servant of the Lord after Moses has died. And God buried Moses on Mount Nebo. And nobody knows where God buried the body of Moses. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Joshua, Yeshua, represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the only one that can take us into the promised land. Amen? That is Jesus. The children of Israel have crossed over the Jordan on dry land. A younger generation... 19 years and younger are going to walk into this promised land. And in this great move of God coming very soon, this revival, it's going to be primarily young people, teenagers and kids are going to tumble into the kingdom of God and be great servants and witnesses for Christ. Hallelujah. I remember in the 60s when we came at a young age to the Lord. And that move of God is coming again, but in a much greater degree. Let's look at Joshua chapter 4, verse 23 through 24. For the Lord your God has dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that which is mighty, you may fear the Lord your God forever. So as they crossed over, they crossed over on dry land, the first miracle that occurred under the ministry of Joshua and the leadership. Yeah. Hello, Linda. Miss seeing you. Hello, Matt. All right. Praise God. So that was the first miracle as they entered the promised land. Now Joshua comes to Jericho. Now we were in Israel a few years ago. We never got to go to Jericho. It's a city located in the West Bank, an occupied Palestinian city in Israel. Let's look at Joshua 5, 13 and 15, where here we see that Joshua has an experience with the Lord very similar to what Moses experienced with the burning bush. Then it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, a man stood opposite him and his sword drawn in his hand. This was no ordinary man. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or are you for our adversaries? So he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Jesus is commander of the Lord's army, of which we are a part of. Hallelujah. We're in the army of the Lord. Praise God. A spiritual army. Now here are seven victorious steps of victory that you can take in your life. You might want to jot them down. Number one, we need to expect victory. You know, Some people don't expect anything, and that's why they don't get anything. (laughs) Faith expects victory. Faith expects results. Faith moves mountains. Hallelujah. Get that revelation in your spirit. 
You were meant to walk in victory, not defeat. Victory is mastery or dominion over this world and all of its obstacles and roadblocks that we all face. The power of dominion is victory. Genesis 1.28. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every, every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. Number two, your enemies will fail and fall before you. Victory is rest or peace from our enemies. We all have enemies in life, and we have the victory over them in Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 12.10. Almost there. 12, 10. Yeah, Deuteronomy 12.10. 10. Okay, sorry. But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land the Lord your God has given you to inherit, he gives you rest from all your enemies around about so that you dwell in safety. Okay, and let's look at Deuteronomy 28.7. That's why we always have two readers. Twenty-eight. Let seven. your fingers do the walking yeah, through the walking. Word of God. God Job says, this is a great Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God, Job. You're blessed in yeah, Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 28.7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you in one way and flee before you seven ways. Hey, Job, I've, the Lord showed me you, there's a calling in your life for ministry. I don't know what you're doing right now, but you're hearing the Word of God. But prepare yourself. God's got good, great plans for you. All right, number three. Sin has been eradicated and defeated in Christ. Hallelujah. You know, if, if our sin was still here, we couldn't come before the throne of God. We couldn't come into the presence of God. That was the problem in the Old Testament. Because of their sin, they could not come into the presence of God. And that sin had to be dealt with. It had to be removed through the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. Victory is mastery over sin. We can master sin. Amen? It doesn't mean you'll never sin again, but you can have victory over it. Hallelujah. Sin doesn't have to rule over you. Romans 6, 6, please. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. The old man is gone. Everybody say that. The old man has been eradicated. The sin nature has been removed. You have a new nature in Christ. Therefore, if any person be in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things are brand new. The old is gone. The new has arrived. Hallelujah. The dominion of the Spirit over sin inside us gives us the victory in Christ. Number four, we've been made righteous. Hallelujah. Victory is freedom from a consciousness of sin. And this is so interesting because so many Christians feel guilt about their sins. And I went through this for years. And my sin was always condemning me and was ever before me. The Bible says we can have a consciousness or, uh, of, of righteousness in our life. And we don't have to be so constantly aware of our sins, but we, we can be aware of the righteousness we have in Christ inside of us. Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things... I sorry, are never with these same things they sacrifice, they, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then they would not be have ceased to be offered. For the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sin. Stop right there. So in the Old Testament, they continually offered up animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And without the shedding of blood, there is no removal of sin. So these precious uh, innocent animals were sacrificed. And it appeased God and it covered the sin, but it did not remove the sin. Right. Only the blood of Christ can take away the sin of the world. Behold, John the Baptist said, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so they were constantly aware of their sin because animals' blood can't remove sin. And so they still had a consciousness of sin. If it had worked, they would no longer have a consciousness of sin. But now that we're in Christ, we don't have a consciousness of sin. It's been removed. Verse 4. Um, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Amen. That's the one thing that I've, as I've grown in the life of righteousness, I'm not so caught up in uh, thinking about my sin, but I'm uh, thinking about the presence of the Lord, the power of God, and the righteousness I have in Christ. Praise God. We've received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness in Christ. Number five, you don't have to be fearing in this life. You know, a lot of us walk through life in fear. Uh, we're human beings and we're prone to fear, right? But if God be for you, who can be against you? 
Faith produces love, and get this, perfect love casts out fear. So you know what the opposite of fear is? Some people say faith, but really it's love. Love casts out fear, and God is love. His agape love removes fear in our lives. We don't have to fear. Everybody said that, I don't have to fear. <laughs> Hebrews two fourteen and 15. And as much as then as the children, having partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that though death he might destroy him, through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. The devil had the power of death over people and the fear of death. And if you ask anybody in life, what do they fear the most? Dying, right? But Christ defeated the fear of death and he defeated death itself. And we don't have to fear uh, dying. Um, we have nothing to fear in this life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number six, victory means nothing can stop or defeat you. God always leads us in victory and triumph. Victory always moves us forward, not backwards. We press on and move forward. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Sometimes leads us in victory. Always, always leads us in victory. God, you know who? Loves that verse? who? Verse two. <laughs> All right. Praise God. All right. We always walk in continual victory and blessing in Christ if we appropriate it by faith. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to that is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. So we're talking about number seven. Faith is the spirit of victory. As we walk in the power of faith in God's word, we walk in continual victory and blessing. Hallelujah. As we believe, therefore we speak. Your words locate you. What are you talking about? Well, out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus said, the mouth speaks. Praise God. We want to speak words of faith and truth. My favorite verse in the Bible. Well, one of them. 1 John 5, 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, your faith. Amen. Faith overcomes all things. The spirit of victory is the spirit of faith. Let's pray. Yeah. Yeboa in Ghana. Praise God. Welcome. Shall we all pray together? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. We thank you for every person viewing and listening to this anointed broadcast. Lord, touch them. Lord, I'm praying right now for the sick. There are people out there who are viewing and listening that are sick in body. Perhaps you're tormented in your mind. And the Lord wants to set you free by the power of God. Right now we speak health and victory and life and healing upon your physical body, upon your minds, Lord, that you'd be set free by the power of God, we pray. Jesus, touch them right now by your anointing your spirit, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed to the devil, for God was with him. Hallelujah. You've been set free now in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you that don't know Christ, you've never been born again. You've never come into the kingdom of God. You need to come to Christ today. Pray this prayer if that's you and you need Christ in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Come into my heart. I turn from my sin. Forgive me for my sins and wrongdoings. I repent from my sin and I turn to you, Lord Jesus. And I ask you now to be my personal Lord and Savior. I'll love you. I'll follow you. I'll worship you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And for you believers, Christians, you know you're a Christian. You know you've been born again. You can point the day when you accepted Christ. But somehow, somewhere, you slipped away. The Lord wants you back. He wants you close. He wants you to use your gifts, the anointing that's still there, the Holy Spirit's still present in your life. But you're now walking with him. Pray this prayer if that's you. Lord, I want to come near to you. I'm going to go come back and be close again and have a near and close relationship. Come near to me, Lord Jesus, as I draw near to you. I rededicate my life to you now. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Well, we hope you prayed those prayers because God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to sing a little bit. Kelly, why don't you lead us out? Casey's in, uh, I almost said Uganda, but now she's in <laughs> Cabo San Lucas in Mexico. All right, let's sing together, shall we? <clears throat> one, two, three. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. 
be gracious still, Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. You know, there's nothing like the peace of God. It passes all understanding. It rules in your hearts and in your minds in Christ Jesus. Hey, guys, power to you as you prosper in the word of God, as you walk in victory and find great success in this life. We'll see you this week for my mini broadcast. Blessings to you all around the world.